Welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. We've got a pretty cool thing going on here for the next couple of months. A mini moon has developed around the Earth. And today we're talking with Dr. Barbara Endel. She's from Baylor University. So, Dr. Endel, I guess the first thing to ask is, what, what exactly is a mini moon and how can something like this happen? Oh, thank you for having me again. A mini moon is any type of satellite that will eventually be caught by the gravitational pull of our planet. A definition of a moon or a satellite is anything that will orbit around a planet or a dwarf planet. So this one just happened to be coming and crossing through the path of our planet and will we stick around for just two months. Oh, that's crazy. So does it have to be an asteroid or can it be other stuff that kind of gets caught in the path? could be anything. It could be literally anything. But uh, yes, asteroids are more common mm. than not. Uh, this one is about the size of a school bus. Mm. So it's a pretty big rock out there, <laughs> not a small one. How exactly did this asteroid that was just going through space get pulled into our orbit? So a few decades ago, there was a comet, Shoemaker-Levy, mm. that actually got pulled into the gravitational pull of Jupiter mm. and actually collided and had a big impact and so on. So from that moment on, we thought, hey, Jupiter is actually protecting us against mm. those uh, bodies out there. But the gravitational pull of Jupiter and Mars as well can actually deflect those asteroids as they get closer to those objects and they're being basically uh, uh, using the gravity assist and being pushed towards the inner solar system. Mm. And that will place them in particular orbits within the solar system that they will eventually get pulled by the gravitational pull of our own planet. <laughs> That's interesting. So it's, it's not going to stay here for long, I think, uh, till, till late November. Why is it only in our orbit for just a little while? Well, all the objects in our solar system are actually attracted by the gravitational pull of the sun. Mm. The sun is the big kahuna, <laughs> right? It has most of the mass and everything else. So it is a tug of war between the pull of our planet Earth and the sun. So eventually, <laughs> when this object is almost about to complete one full orbit, it will be pulled again <laughs> by the sun. So you were saying it was pretty decent size, I think, about the size of a school bus, roughly. Is this something that a, a person could see in the sky or maybe see with a telescope? Uh, we wish. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> this one is very faint. Mm. You would need a 30-inch telescope oh. and a camera. So professional astronomers will be able to see it, but it's not going to oh. be visible in the night sky. OK, so it, it's kind of a cool thing to talk about. Is this rare, or does this happen very often? This is an amazing question. Actually, this particular asteroid has been already a mini moon of mm. our planet back in the 60s. 60s, I believe. Mm. And uh, we have record of other objects of similar size that have been also attracted to that. Arguably, there is always a dishwasher size <laughs> object orbiting <laughs> around our planet. We just can't see mm. because, again, those rocks out there, <laughs> they're very rocky materials, uh, they just reflect the light from the sun. They don't produce their own light. So uh, it's very, very difficult to stumble across one of those. <laughs> yeah, because you think something the size of a school bus is big, but when you're talking in space and coming towards. So they use the, and I'm going to have to look here, the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System. So what, what is, I know that's to help find asteroids, but what is that system doing and how does it protect us by seeing this stuff? Well, actually, it has something to do even with the dinosaurs, mm. basically. So we uh, actually have been trying to explain how an extinction of the dinosaurs would happen in 65 million years ago until we finally found the crater. Mm. And, uh, and then, of course, there is like the whole global impact and so on. So in the 90s, from the 90s on, NASA started spending quite some money to fund uh, the observations of the near-Earth uh, asteroids, which will basically map the orbits and we can make the trajectories and see where they're going. Fortunately for us, when you say something comes close to us and uh, most of the, I mean, nearly all the planets in the solar system are in a disk, mm -hmm. like we, we talked about during the eclipse, right? The, even the moon is also in the same plane. But the asteroids can come on more inclined planes. Mm. So it's just a matter of our planets moving this way and the asteroid is coming with an inclined angle. So it's, it makes it a little bit 
uh, <laughs> more difficult to hit, basically, yes. because you add the third dimension. So as a professor, I mean, you've had an interesting year of stuff that students, I mean, even an eclipse, we had a partial lunar eclipse, there's an annular eclipse coming up later in uh, parts of the Pacific. How fun is it to kind of get some of this real world stuff that you can talk with your students? Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> I mean, the, as I say, the universe is fascinating. Mm -hmm. We can always look at those things and learn new stuff and talk about uh, the composition of the solar system. And, and an asteroid is basically what's left over from the formation of our mm -hmm. solar system. So it's really, really, really interesting and really fascinating. Mm -hmm. And I've got to give you some credit because you were the first person I talked to about the solar eclipse and the excitement you had in your voice talking about it. I didn't think it would even match up to that, but it was even more. I, I couldn't, you, you described it as a visceral experience and that was 100% and I actually had to describe it on air while I was seeing it for the first oh. time and it was like giving you the chills. So I, I thank you for talking about this, talking about the eclipse, everything, just spreading your wealth of knowledge when it comes to space related science. Well, thank you so much for having me.